Expedition Overland's Great Pursuit is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. In association with Patriot Campers and PCOR Systems. In part by Stanley. Warren. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Max Tracks. Garmin. CBI Off-Road Fabrication Equipped Aviator Paramotor The Power of Red Arc Magpul As an overlander, Arizona does not disappoint. It's awesome, and we can't wait to spend more time here in the future. Last night, we had one of the greatest flights of our young careers, and today we will push on to finish our mission on the Arizona Peace Trail, completing the Kingman to Yuma section before driving back into Mexico. Well, good morning. Here we are in beautiful Arizona, the Coyote Peak that we just had an amazing flight around last night. But today's objective is now to continue on and move towards Yuma, uh, Arizona. And we're still finding out how far our tanks can go, how far our water can go, and how far our food can go. We think we're gonna be able to make it if we put in 10 gallons of fuel in the jerry cans of uh, Tundra when it's ready for it. But uh, it's a really big day, so stay tuned. We'll see how this goes. You might be able to tell, but we are having a terrible time. Perhaps it's that fabulous Arizona sun. The trail miles today are still substantial, but the roads are generally at a higher speed, which is good because we have a long way to go. We push on just a little further before we drop two jerrys of fuel into Trinity. While the guys fuel up, I notice that we are surrounded by those famous saguaro cactus we first found down in Baja, Mexico some years ago. That's right, I pronounced it right this time. And speaking of Mexico, that's where we're headed. The little known Altar Desert. So you guys know that brought us up to those 10 gallons, brought us up to half a tank there, at least on the reading. Nice, that, uh, that'll hopefully get us to uh, gas station, hopefully. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're fueling up on the U.S. side of the border. We're gonna completely load up on fuel, and if we can do it, we're gonna go all the way into Mexico, across the Altar Desert, and maybe make it all the way back, unless the plans change. But we're going in hot with as much fuel as possible and water, and we'll see how long we can be in another country with our trucks. Self-sustained. Game on. Game on. To Mexico. We have loaded up on fuel in Yuma, and with our long-range tanks and what we have learned from our Arizona section, we should be able to do the next challenge without a fuel stop. The Gran Deserto de Altar 
is one of the major sub-eco-regions of the Sonora Desert. It includes the only active Erg Dune region in North America. The desert extends across much of the northern border of the Gulf of California, spanning more than 62 miles east to west and over 31 miles north to south. An Erg Desert, also known as a Dune Sea, can be found around the world, like the Sahara Desert and the Simpson Desert in Australia, or even further places, such as Venus, Mars, and Saturn's moon, Titan. I first heard of the Altar some years ago from my good friend and publisher of Overland Journal, Scott Brady, when he took a daring team of Land Rovers across it in 2012. I've wanted to travel here ever since. We consulted with Scott to make sure we did this right. There are certain areas that you can and cannot go in the Altar. In particular, the Biosphere Reserve, one of Sonora's largest protected wilderness areas. And our route is designed to stay away from it. The Altar is an extremely remote region and is no joke exploring here. Rescue is a long way out, if not impossible. Running out of fuel or a rollover out here could be devastating. This is clear, and it's this morning talk. Welcome to the Altar Desert. We are here on location in Mexico where it is very humid in the morning. Very interesting. So our mission over the next few days is to cross the Altar Desert. So I'm glad that the sand this morning is humid and has a lot of moisture content to it. It's gonna really help us with these three vehicles, especially with trailers. Trailers and sand don't go together very well usually. So last night as we came in, we aired down to low pressures. We're already at 18 on our trucks and 15 pounds on our trailers. Saw a substantial increase in traction and flotation. But there is, oh, I don't know, about 70 miles of dunes to the south that we have to cross. So hopefully we don't get way into the middle of them and then we just lose all of our traction in the hot sand and can't go anywhere. That is what we're about to find out. So this morning's dew is exactly what we needed, but it won't last forever. It'll cook off by noon. Brian walks to the highest dune ridge to take a wind reading. Sadly, the wind is not within our flight parameters, so we decide to move on. But it was a decision that didn't really come easy. It's a tough one. It's, I really want to fly, but also I don't want to die. All sadness of not flying is quickly swept away within minutes after getting behind the wheel. Also within minutes, the Land Cruiser is stuck for the first time. Being the third vehicle is the hardest when following sand tracks. Any integrity the sand had is generally trashed by the time the third truck rolls over. But a simple stuck is nothing when you can take the easy way out. Don't forget that the further you go from the stuck, the further you have to walk back to get your max tracks. Brian Conley has never driven in dunes before, so today he's going to go from amateur to novice pretty quickly. Sadly, that means getting stuck a lot as you learn the rhythm of the dunes, when to hold power, when to back off, and the fine dance in between. The route finding seems easy at first. We even find a sand highway of sorts, allowing us to quickly get deeper into the dune sea. But then the route just vanishes, blown over by the wind. We're gonna have to navigate by instrument from this point on. Ryan Erickson and I take on a scouting mission to prevent the whole fleet from getting into a pickle. And in the process, we find ourselves in one. Ryan just got us real stuck. I sure did. That's what I'm here for. All right, here we go. Yeah, we crested over that and we just felt it go whomp right on the frame. Well, Clay and Ryan are struggling. 
in the sand dunes, we're also struggling mm -hmm. by watching them from afar with the drone in an air-conditioned tundra. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Okay, here we go. Gonna do max tracks here. I'm gonna put them in the back. Full lockers on. That's the plan. Good thing the Jeep's got a lot of down travel in the rear. It's got a lot of suspension. It's nice and easy like you've been doing it. There we go. Nice. You're up. Awesome. That's about as high centered as you can get without a winch. Cool. On the road again. How's the uh, lunch tummies? <laughs> Time to get serious. Watch ready this, for this? We're having a serious talk. Let's get serious. 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 Let's ready. get serious. All right, Tanner. Serious. We are in the middle of the Altar Desert. It's lunchtime, it's hot. We're gonna hang out under the beautiful shade of the awning. Hang out in the beautiful shade of the awning. And come up with the game plan as to where we're going next. Currently, no plan. Let me do the taste test. Cherry tastes like Twizzlers. <sighs> it's refreshing. Very refreshing. Mine tastes like blackberry. Whoa. You have really good taste buds. As the day wears on, the route finding becomes more and more challenging. Eventually, the soft sand starts to get the best of us, and we are finding ourselves in multiple situations at once. Well, here we are in the Altar Desert. We have Trinity over here. We are waiting for Odin to find a way further south we're headed. And so, but Land Cruiser is back down here where we came from and they got stuck. So we're kind of waiting on them to figure it out so we can keep on moving. Samson's out there somewhere. Let's see if they can get unstuck. <sighs> we were told fairly certainly by several people that we shouldn't take trailers in here. Challenge accepted. We are asking a lot of the Tundra, towing a toy hauler through here. It's going to come with its own set of consequences, and we know that. This dune has faced the sun all day and is extremely soft. So a lot of people will ask me, how many max tracks do I need? Uh, and the, the real number is four. If you're going to be doing anything in sand, mud, or snow, which is primarily when you're going to be using Max Tracks, with a four wheel drive, you need four of them. Right now, we just pulled eight into the equation because we can build a road with them. Uh, so, having a team of trucks with multiple sets of Max Tracks, when the going gets tough, you can do a lot of stuff. It's just like this really handy tool. What you're seeing here is very common. We're using multiple methods of extraction at once, max tracks and winches. Using these two methods in conjunction with each other, frankly, is often safer and will save your equipment. And vehicle sympathy out here is the name of the game. Try driving out of this. I don't have a ton of hope. We are so heavy. 
and have no momentum, so we'll see what we can do here. It's been said that overlanding is simply just traveling somewhere interesting to eat something. And this wouldn't be an overlanding show without some sort of cooking sequence. So here you go. Steaks are on. Steaks are ready! I didn't actually have any because I figured it burned the tar out of my mouth. <laughs> Making movies. Did it look like it? Movie it magic. magic. He woke up like this. He woke up like this. He, man. Yeah, I sure did. Yeah. Looking Looking good. Great. Looking great. Looking great. Yep. <laughs> Did a great job putting away the ladder. Nailed it. He's baiting me in. He wants me to get it so he can <laughs> steal it back. We just uh, found out last night that we parked our vehicle and tent ladder in a uh, scorpion den. So that was exciting. I think we killed like three right here. So I went down first to clear it out for Ryan. He has a thing for scorpions. <laughs> I am afraid of scorpions. <laughs> I've never seen them before in Fair my enough. life. They're a new thing. I've seen transformers too many times. <laughs> and they are scary. <laughs> Those tails. And I think the littler they are, the more poisonous they are. Makes sense to me. And there was a teeny tiny one. It could have slithered all kinds of places, and I'm not a fan. It's not off to a good start. <laughs> Day two in the dunes in the Altar Desert of Mexico, and it's a lot more the same. We just got to keep pushing through the dunes. Woke up to dry conditions this morning. The sand is no different than it was seemingly last night. Obviously it's cooler, but it's not wet like it was. So that was kind of a bit of a bummer, but uh, we'll be able to move through it for still for a good period of time before it warms up again today. And, uh, but all in all, having a great time. Very windy night last night, which I think kind of wore on the team a little bit. Everybody, everybody knows a windy night in a tent is never a, a great time. So we're all kind of woke up late and getting coffee on board, little slow start, but uh, today should be really good. Day two starts off with a bang, when a message about the lip at the top of a dune doesn't go through. <laughs> Whoa. That was incredibly deceiving. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Whoops. <laughs> 
gonna be a good day in the dunes. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> We're out in the altar, one of the probably more remote places I feel we've been. We're just having a ball. It's also Tanner's first time driving in the dunes, and he requests a quick set of pointers before heading out on his own. So you're in the Jeep, so you take the worst line. Okay. And I think that is, let's go to the left. Okay. So you're going straight down the hill, the fall line. And the fall line is, if you were to take a ball and drop it, gotcha. all the ball would roll yeah. down the hill. That's the way you go. Okay. Gotcha. And this is what I think is so much fun about this, because you're just literally out here figuring it out. Yeah, you're not following a road, you're following your own path. A passable route is becoming harder and harder to find. But a team effort is making the recoveries faster and faster. And we continue to utilize the best tools for the job. Here, we are using a snatch strap because the Tundra is going to need continuous help to get over this dune. Come back, come back about. There you go. Our scouting in Odin leads to no feasible route at this point. We ran into a dead end uh, about an hour ago. Now we've been working our way back around. We were able to find a weakness in the dune set that's running uh, down the line. And so we crossed over it. Now we're up a new valley. And I'll show you on the map here what we're doing. So right here, that's where we dead ended. So we backtracked and then we found a weakness here instead of going all the way out to find something, we found another one here. And then we're working ourselves into this new valley you can see this valley running up the way. So we're just gonna keep going. And we have a track about a mile to the left of us here, over in those big dunes. We're just not capable of doing those big dunes with our equipment right now. But if we keep on this valley, we'll eventually come up straight and intersect it. That's the plan. We just have to figure out how to get our way and three trucks and two trailers through that. It's a very fun problem set to be working through. It's awesome. Our scouting in Odin reveals that there is no feasible route to the southeast. We will have to turn around and find a new route. Fuel levels in Trinity are getting critically low, and we are now into our reserve fuel status. There isn't any room for mistakes beyond this point. Alright, we're getting close. We made a cross country across the flats there for this one target of a saddle that we could see that we think we can get over. Next couple of minutes here we're going to find out if that is truth or not. There it is actually, that's our first glimpse. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to right. park it right here and look at it. Oh yeah. Yeah, if we go right, drop down. Okay. Check it out. Yeah, up that way. Go right. Okay. 
Yeah, it's getting to that point to where it's like, oh, we're having fun, and then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> Tundra's fuel's getting low. We tried three different ways out of here, none of them works, and then we backtracked a bunch, and hopefully it works. We made the right decision to bail right then. Already yep. I feel good about it. As far as we can tell, this is the weakest point in the dunes for miles. And with fuel running low, we can't afford to keep scouting. We need to go for it. Ty sends the tundra up the hill. Nearly making it, Ty bogs again. And if you want to see what a textbook recovery by a single person looks like, this is it. I'm going to try to back this trailer up. You got this, Ty. As soon as we crest the dune, we get a big sense of relief that we didn't end up like the last guy. This place is truly unforgiving. We didn't come all this way just to drive though. We also came to fly. With just one night left, we better make tomorrow morning This flight has the potential to be one of the best. Let's do this. Free flight checklist. Ready? Ready. Got score. Okay. This is always the most awkward part. Ah! My motor is not running. Had a motor issue last night. Uh, fixed it. Happened again this morning. Fixed it. Then I started having throttle issues. Can't fix it. Anymore. So, teams only got a limited amount of gas, so they got to head into the dunes. Which means that uh, I'm part of the ground crew now. Uh, so, really disappointing, but. Mostly just that, it's a party. In total disappointment shared by all of us, Brian will not be able to fly today. Our objective is to fly to the tallest dunes we can find, to see if we can surf the dunes from the air. Left right, Clay. Woo yeah! I can say that flying the Erg dunes in the Altar Desert is one of the most fantastic things you can do. Wow, this is amazing. Holy cannoli. Holy cow. I, 
I wish Brian was here. 30 minutes into the flight, we know that we must return back to join the trucks. We decide to join the convoy from the air. Can't believe I'm not up there with them. Look at that. Look how low tie got. It's like bobbing. That's 100% fun. We hang with the trucks as long as possible, and this becomes our longest duration flight to date. One hour, 42 minutes, and 65 miles covered. Fine. It is so flippin' fun. Yeah. Like, risk reward factor, pretty high, pretty high risk but incredibly high reward. Incredibly high reward, worth it. It was an awesome conclusion. I couldn't have asked for anything better than what we just did. I've been dreaming about flying those dunes for about five months now, and we got to do it today, and it was really cool. The perfect end to a great trip. After evaluating the map, we find out that as we come out of the dunes here, we're not far from a legendary campsite we found earlier this year. Who would have ever imagined we'd be right back here, huh guys? Yeehaw! Perhaps this year is coming full circle. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Actually, what am I talking about again? Just anything, everything? <clears throat> Oh, the red light's on. Okay, you're good. <laughs> well, I can't think of a better way to end a trip than back at a spot that you wish you could have spent more time in. Last time we were here, it was cold and windy. Now it's just perfect. And uh, it's, it's a great place to stop and reflect and think about everything we've gone through in the last, uh, in the last nine, ten months. I never had the goal of crossing the Altar Desert. I didn't have the goal of flying a PPG in the sand dunes. I didn't have the goal of traveling the back country of Arizona. Uh, I didn't have the goal, I, none of these, none of the goals on this trip, or the, the, in this case, this short piece of it, they weren't my goals. But it's so much fun to, to be a part of accomplishing goals that other people have. I'll miss the trucks and I'll miss the day and I'll miss the sand and I'll miss the problem solving and the fixing and the just figuring stuff out uh, in a totally different place and that is not normal, that is different than my regular life. That variety is, is really healthy, is really, it, it opens your, your mind to, you're out of the regular and when you go back to regular you're going to think different. Uh, kind of the theme of, of this season is the great pursuit and how we really have to pursue adventure. You know, adventure doesn't always come and find us. We sometimes have to go look for it or sometimes it's sitting right in front of us. We just don't choose to step into it. I'm, I am a different person in a way than when I started all this. I feel like I grew up some this year. You know, you ever had that feeling? Or that those times when you're like, you know what, this was a tough thing, or this or that, I just feel like I've grown up a little bit. That's how I feel. If you're not trying to make yourself better, if you're not um, becoming more aware of who you are and, and what your place is, or of uh, what makes you tick, why are you doing it? Go out and do what you're created to do. Go out and be who you're created to be. Life's too short. Adventure is the pursuit of oneself. That's kind of the motto that we've been running off this year. 
and really what that boils down to is when you go out on an adventure you you learn a lot about yourself you learn about what's good and what's bad and if you can surround yourself with the right people they'll chip away at you they'll round you out just as important as what you do and where you adventure is who you adventure with we got some great great guys to go on the trip with had a ton of fun and uh, just be able to share that with some great guys is such such a blessing so thankful that we, we live in a really big world a lot of big places to go if you have the means to do it don't let anything stop you and if you don't have the means to do it get the means to do it it's worth it it's worth getting out it's worth going it's worth adventuring it's worth pushing yourself go get them go out there find adventure it doesn't have to look like this it can look like anything but if it's stretching to you and it scares you a little bit, you should probably go do it. I'd love to hear about it sometime. On to the next thing. I hope the camera's on. I hope it hit record. It's been an absolute blast. Where are we going next year? Africa? I'm down. Australia? Clay has a different idea. What's your idea? What's my idea? Oh, I can't say it now. Help us fuel the adventure by checking out exoverland.com and picking up some merchandise.